Okay, so in this video, I'm going to review the electricity mock exam that was done recently. So starting with some multiple choice questions. So we've got X and Y connected in parallel to a supply. Power dissipated by lamp X is 24 watts. Power dissipated by lamp Y is 6 watts. We have an EMF of 12 volts that has negligible internal resistance. What is the total current drawn from the supply by both lamps? So pause the video now, have a crack at this question, then we'll review it. Okay, so let's see how we should have done it. So the way I approach this is I worked out the total power that was dissipated. Because if it's that's the output power, that's how much power our battery must have put in. So once we work that out, we know the EMF supplied, so the power divided by the EMF would give us the total current coming out of the battery and therefore the total current drawn from the supply. So we can see that's option D. Okay, so moving on to question two, um, we've got a circuit that is connected and we want the total resistance between points X and Y. Okay, so if we take a look at this one, we have got two parallel loops essentially. So what I'm going to do is I calculate the resistance of each parallel loop separately. So one of them would just be 30 plus 30, the other would be 20 plus 20. Then we use the parallel law to combine those two together. Then we add them together, flip it back over, and we end up with 24, which is option A. Okay. So we've got two resistors of resistances of 120 ohms and 500 ohms, and they're connected in parallel. The percentage uncertainty in the value of resistance of each resistor is 10%. What is the correct value of the total resistance and the percentage uncertainty? Okay, so first off, let's find out the correct value of the total resistance. We can see that when we use the reciprocal rule, the resistance is going to be 97. So it's going to be option A or B. Working out the percentage uncertainty is a little bit more tricky. So the first thing I'm going to do is if each of the resistors can be 10% bigger, I'm going to calculate the maximum possible resistance of the parallel setup, which we can see essentially we're going to multiply each of the resistances by 1.1 to make it 10% bigger. Then I'm going to use this to find the percentage uncertainty. So the percentage difference between the maximum and like the average value, if you like, is 9%. So we can see that we're going to go with option A stating 10%. Okay, so question four, the intensity of the light incident on the LDR is reduced in the potential divider circuit we've got here, which row correctly describes the observed change on the ammeter and voltmeter. Okay, so first off, the knowledge you need, as light intensity decreases, LDR resistance increases. That's the knowledge we expected. So if the resistance increases in our circuit, the current is going to decrease everywhere in that circuit. So we know our ammeter reading is going to decrease, so it must be A or B. The resistance of the fixed resistor has stayed the same. So using Ohm's law, if you have a smaller current but resistance is constant, the voltmeter reading is going to decrease, therefore we want option A. All right, question five, which is not an international system SI base unit? Um, so this is one people often get wrong. Um, so the correct answer is Coulomb. Um, we define a coulomb as an amp second in base units. So amps or current is a base unit, but charge is not. And the reason for that is because we can actually easily measure current. We can't easily measure charge, so that's why. Okay, so the resistors below are identical. Each combination is connecting the circuit to a six volt battery with no internal resistance. For which combination is the most power dissipated? Well, the equation I'm going to use is P is V squared over R. So essentially, to get maximum power, we want the minimum resistance because the EMF is the same for all of them. So the three resistors in parallel will have the smallest resistance. It will have resistance R over three. So 
if it has the smallest resistance, it's going to have max power. So we want option D. OK, so a student uses an ohm meter and gets five readings, all of 1.89 kiloohms. They change the range from on the actual ohm meter itself from 0 to 20 to 0 to 2. And they take five new readings, which we've got. Which line in the table correctly describes the effects of this change? OK, so let's first de define what we mean by resolution and precision, because that will help us get an answer. So resolution is the smallest change a meter can detect. So what we've done is we've improved the resolution of the ohm meter there. So that's what we've done for the meter. So we're going to go with either A or B. Precision is the number of decimal places a measurement is stated to. So for the results, what we've done is we've made them more precise. So that gives us option A. So question eight, in the circuit below, the thermistor conducts better at high temperatures. So which set of conditions reduces the highest reading on the voltmeter? Um, so what I'm going to do is take each option one by one. So option A, high light intensity, high temperature. So high light intensity is going to decrease the resistance of the LDR. And then which we can see would have the effect of uh, decreasing the voltmeter reading. But high temperature would decrease the resistance of the thermistor. So that works in the opposite direction. Option B, high light intensity increases the voltmeter reading. Low temperature increases the resistance of the thermistor. Both of those things act to increase the voltmeter reading. So that's looking good. Option C, low light intensity means our thermistor has a is, sorry, our LDR has a high resistance, which decreases our voltmeter reading. Not great. High temperature would decrease the resistance of the thermistor, so that could be okay. And then option D, low light intensity means the resistance of the LDR increases, which is no good. And then low temperature increases our, the resistance of our thermistor, which is promising. So we can see it's only option B where both of the changes have acted to increase the voltmeter reading. So that's going to be the one that we're looking for. OK, so we've got a length of square paving stone that is 0.5 plus minus 0.002 meters. Percentage uncertainty in the length measurement is 0.4%. The area is 0.250. What's the uncertainty? So. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the percentage uncertainty in the area is. So if each length has a percentage uncertainty of 0.4, that makes the percentage uncertainty in the area 0.8 because it's L squared. Then what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange the equation to calculate the uncertainty, plug the values in, and we can see we end up with option C. OK, so getting on to some longer answer type questions now. So we've got a, the circuits shown. All the resistors are 100 ohms. The battery has negligible internal resistance. State the relationship between IT, I1 and I2. So here we're just using Kirchhoff's current law. And that states that the total current going into a junction is equal to the total current coming out. So I1 plus I2 must be equal to IT. So explain why I2 is twice as large as I1. So the first thing to recognize is for the two parallel sections, their potential difference is the same. That's a characteristic of parallel stuff. So now we can use Ohm's law. If the potential difference is constant, we should know that current is inversely proportional to resistance. So I1 is going through double the resistance. So that means it would be half the current or I2 is going through half the resistance. So therefore it would be double. OK, 
show the total resistance of the circuit is less than 170 ohms. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the resistance of the parallel section. So the two series resistors will add together to give you 200. So the total resistance of the parallel section is 200 over 3. The parallel section is then in series with the resistor on its own. So we add 100 to 200 over 3, giving us 166.666, which is clearly less than 170. Calculate the power supplied by the battery. So we know the EMF, we now know the total resistance, so we can use P equals V squared over R. P is 12, R is 166, blah, 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 giving us a total power of 0.86 watts. So houses are heated by night storage heaters, which use cheap electricity between the hours of midnight and 7 a.m. We've got this set, so we've got an EMF source of 230, so it's mains, and we've got three storage heaters, all 3.4 kilowatts, and there's no internal resistance. Show that the resistance of each heating element is about 15 ohms when the heater is operating at 230 volts. Okay, so the first thing I would do is work out the total power of the circuit. So 3.5 times 3 is 10.5 kilowatts. If all the resistors are identical, the total resistance is going to be R over 3, because we've got three resistors in parallel. So what we're going to do is the total power will be equal to the EMF squared over the total resistance. So that means we can swap power and resistance essentially. We can then make R the subject and calculate it and it comes out as 15.11, which we can see is roughly 15 ohms. All right, so we've got the heating element constructed from a metallic wire with this resistivity. We've got the radius of the wire determine the length. So we've got the resistance already from the last question. So what we need to do is plug that into our resistivity equation. Remember, the cross-sectional area of a wire is a circle, which is why we're using pi r squared, and that gives us a length of 9 meters. So state and explain whether the heat uh, obeys Ohm's law. So no, it doesn't. So as the temperature rises, the resistance of the heater is going to increase as well. So we wouldn't find that current is directly proportional to potential difference anymore, which is what Ohm's law states. So the answer there would be no. So the cost of one kilowatt hour of energy is 7.6 pence. Calculate the cost of using three storage heaters between midnight and 7 a.m. every night for one week. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the number of hours that it's operating for. So it's seven hours a night, seven days in a week, so 49 hours. So the total system so has a power of 10.5 kilowatts times by 49 hours gives us the total number of kilowatt hours times by 7.6 gives us the total pence and I would give that to the nearest pound so 39 pounds okay so we've got a student monitoring the temperature of room using a potential divider with an NTC thermistor the student sets up the circuit as shown uh, so we've got three of them making up the potential divider battery has an EMF of six volts and negligible internal resistance and obviously not a fan of internal resistance today. When the temperature of the thermistor is 12 degrees, the thermistor has a resistance of 6.8 kiloohms. The variable resistor is 1.4 kiloohms, uh, and then the other resistor we can see is 1.1 kiloohms. Calculate the voltmeter reading. So uh, you can do it using a potential divider equation. That's fine. I'm just going to do it using Ohm's law. So the total resistance, they're in series, so we add together their resistances, gives us 9.3 kilo ohms. The total potential difference is 6, so 6 divided by 9,300 gives us the current. Using ohms are again, the current through the resistor is the same as the current going around the circuit, so times that by the resistance gives us a potential difference of 0.71 volts, the same as a potential divider equation. So explain how the reading on the voltmeter will change when the temperature of the thermistor increases. So when the temperature of the thermistor increases, 
the thermistor resistance will decrease, which will mean the circuit current will increase because it's got the same EMF. And the, for the fixed resistor, if we use Ohm's law, if the current is higher while its resistance is the same, the voltmeter reading must increase. Okay, so we've got a battery connected across a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So the EMF is 3 volts, there's no internal resistance, the ammeter has negligible resistance, and the voltmeter has very high resistance. Those things mean they won't affect our circuit. The thermistor has a resistance of 100 ohms at room temperature and a cross-sectional area of 3.8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. The density of free electrons is 5 times 10 to the 25 per meter cubed. Calculate the mean drift velocity of the free electrons in the thermistor. So we're going to use the, the equation that connects current and drift velocity. And I'm going to rearrange it to make drift velocity the subject. We don't have current, we have resistance and EMF, so I'm going to substitute that in for current. Then we're in a position where we can plug in our values, and we get an answer of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. So we're in the order of magnitude of sort of 0. Point, well that's basically 1 millimeter per second, which is a very typical drift velocity. The thermistor is now heated using a naked flame. Describe and explain the effect on the ammeter and the voltmeter readings. So the voltmeter reading won't change as it's the only component in the circuit. So it, the potential difference has to be the same as the EMF. So that's just using Kirchhoff's law, which states the sum of the potential differences must be the sum of the EMFs. So that's very straightforward. So if temperature increases, the thermistor re resistance will decrease. So the fixed EMF the smaller resistance will mean a higher current. So that's going to be a bigger ammeter reading. Okay, so we have a cell of EMF 1.5 volts. It now has an internal resistance R. Uniform wire AB has length 1 meter and its resistance is 16 ohms. When the contact is in the middle of the wire, the voltmeter reading is 1.2 volts. Calculate the internal resistance of the cell. So, the first thing is to realize that at half the length, the resistance of the wire will be half, so it'll be 8 ohms. So the resistance that the voltmeter is measuring across is 10 ohms. So now we can use a potential divider equation. So we know the voltmeter reads 1.2, and the total EMF across the whole circuit is 1.5. So we can then rearrange that to make R the subject, and it comes out nice and straightforward, 2.5 ohms. So finally, the contact X is now moved from A to B. So the distance of the contact from A is D, so it's increasing. Diagram shows the variation of the potential difference across the terminals of the cell. Explain this variation in terms of current. So the first thing is if D is increased, the total resistance in the circuit will increase, therefore current decreases. That's our starting point. So as the internal resistance stays constant, if the current decreases, the potential lost across the internal resistance will decrease. So the sum of the potential differences must be to sum of the EMFs. So if the potential difference across the internal resistor decreases, the potential difference across the external resistance, or called the terminal voltage, must increase, which is what we're seeing from that graph. So that finishes this electricity mock exam. I hope you found that useful to review your answers to these questions. If you want to ask any questions at this point, please feel free to comment and ask me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thank you very much for taking the time to watch.